Hello and welcome back to the vlog. Thank you so much for joining us here. Thank you so much for hitting that subscribe button because I know you just did that, so I really appreciate it. So today we're closing on the cabin house, which if you've been following the, uh, the YouTube channel here for just a little while, you know that uh, that house was listed about a month ago and it is now January 11th and we are closing on it. So uh, we got a contract on it in five days, <clears throat> full ask and um, get this thing done today uh, so that my clients can move on and do their next thing. So, headed to closing now, green light, perfect timing. Now that you're there and I can, <laughs> uh, a little rainy here in Atlanta today. Uh, as far as uh, this house goes though, there's two things that I wanted to talk about and we're talking about them on Instagram, by the way, a little more behind the scenes, a little more as it's happening, at Matt underscore Lamarche, by the way. Two things, Zillow. <laughs> You guys know how I feel about Zillow. We've talked about it a lot in the past, but there's two things in particular uh, as it relates to this house that I think are pretty consistent across the board for most people. Number one, when before, actually, just before we listed that house, Zillow's Zestimate said that that house was worth $600,000. We are under contract and are closing today for $675,000. That's a problem. Typically, most people think their house is worth more than Zillow does, and in this case, uh, they as well thought that, but there's the perceived value and then there's the actual value. The actual value is what someone will walk through the door and hand you cash or in a financial, you know, financing situation, will get a loan for that amount of money. So that's the first thing. Do not trust Zestimates. Obviously, if you're thinking about selling your houses, it's not a bad place to go and get an idea, a range, if you will. But what I recommend to my um, sellers is first, if, if there's a great delta between what I think the house is worth and what they think the house is worth, I'll recommend an appraisal. And the reason that I'll recommend an appraisal on the front side is A, we know we won't overprice ourselves or underprice ourselves, but also it would tell us exactly what a bank will lend on that house, period, end of discussion. Now, each appraiser is different. Each appraiser will have their own subjective not objective uh, idea of what that house is worth. And so, you know, they're also gonna give you a range and say, okay, this house is between 500 and $525,000. Um, the problem right now with appraisers is that a lot of them are not able to go in the homes because of COVID and everything going on there. So this is not gonna be super evergreen content. It's not true forever. Um, but also they're doing drive-bys and driving the neighborhood and seeing what the comps look like. And so. My job as your agent, as a listing agent, is to help them understand what the value is and what someone should pay for that house. A few moments later. It's closed, it's official, it's done. Off the market. The second thing is something that we experienced multiple times in this particular listing and I don't know why. There's no rhyme, there's no reason, there's no explanation at all. Um, I got multiple calls from other agents and I got multiple calls from consumers, normal buyers, that we're trying to get in to show this house even after we had gone under contract. Again, we're on the market for five days. So day six through today, even on Friday, three days ago, I still got a call from people, an agent in particular on Friday, that said, hey, you know, we saw this uh, this thing is back on the market. And I'm like, what? Back on the market? What are you talking about? It's not back on the market. We're closing on Monday. Don't, no, stop. Don't look. <laughs> And it's just really frustrating because you guys know I'm a big believer in time management and that was screwing up a lot of people's time, not just mine, but the other agents, the buyers, the people that were reaching out and saying, hey, it looks like this house is back on the, back on the market and it never was. So do not believe Zillow. I'm not saying this because I don't buy their leads or because I don't like their platform. I actually think the platform's really good for what it is and what it provides you. But those two things in particular are wildly inaccurate and you cannot put any stock in them. So just wanted to keep this one short and sweet, but those are the re two reasons, big reasons, you do not trust Zillow and that you should trust someone that does this every single day and is able to pull accurate information for you, whether it is the price or whether the thing is actually still on the market because I can make a phone call, I can figure out if this thing is actually still for sale or not, or if it came back on the market, or if it's still pending, or if they're coming out of due diligence. Zillow doesn't tell you all that, I will. That's it, thank you guys so much again 
for following along the vlog. I really do appreciate it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. I think this one's like four or five minutes long. I can't really beat that. I'm trying to jam a ton of value into 2021. So if you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. And as always, all of my contact information is down below. So if you know someone looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate in the year 2021, let me know. I'd be happy to help them. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day and we'll talk to you soon. Goodbye.